Hello, this is MFM 2PI, our trigonometry unit, and this is the first lesson, the Pythagorean Theorem. The objective of this lesson is to learn how to calculate the side lengths of a right angle triangle using the Pythagorean Theorem. Let's get to it. The Pythagorean Theorem is a relationship between the sides of a right angle triangle. We'll recall that a right angle triangle has one angle that is 90 degrees. This special relationship, the Pythagorean Theorem, states that, and I'm going to highlight it here, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And this is what the Pythagorean Theorem looks like. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So let's get some of the details out of the way here at the beginning. In the Pythagorean Theorem, the variable C always represents our hypotenuse. The other two sides of our triangle can be A and B, respectively. It doesn't matter which one is which. How do we recognize the hypotenuse? Well, for starters, the hypotenuse is the longest side of our right angle triangle, which means it is opposite the right angle or the 90 degree angle in our triangle. In terms of this unit, we're going to be looking at how to determine different values in a right angle triangle. So let's set up when we should use the Pythagorean Theorem. You will use the Pythagorean Theorem if you are given two sides in a right angle triangle and you are trying to find the one remaining side. So let's start first by imagining that we have been given sides A and B and we are looking to solve for the hypotenuse. So if we jump down to uh, part B, example A, let's have a look at this triangle here. First thing for us we want to know are we given the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse here represented by the variable M is the variable that we're trying to find so we don't have our hypotenuse but we are given A and B as sides 110 and 88 respectively. So let's start by writing out our Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now we don't know what C is. C in this context, as I said, is M. But we do know A and we do know B. So let's substitute those known values in right now. 110 squared plus 88 squared. From here, we're just going to do some calculating, so I'm going to grab my calculator, that's 110 squared plus 88 squared, that's going to give me 19,844. Now this lump number looks really big, don't panic however because this value as it stands now is a C squared. How do we go about acquiring the actual C value? We are going to square root both sides of our equation. So we have C equal to the square root of 19,844. And that's going to give us 140.9. We'll round this to one decimal place. And my unit of measure is not provided, so we can just write down units. And that's how we go about calculating um, what the hypotenuse would be in a right angle triangle given the other two sides. So what I'd like you to do now is hit pause in the video and I'd like you to go and try example B on your own. So try example B, when you've got an answer, come on back and we'll see how you did. Okay, let's see how you did. I'm going to start by writing out my Pythagorean theorem, a squared, or c squared equals a squared plus b squared. In this example again, I don't have my hypotenuse, but I have been given two sides, 64 and 22. So I'm going to substitute those in right now. 64 squared plus 22 squared. Now I will put that into my calculator. 64 squared plus 22 squared, and that's going to give me 4,580. Uh, Remember, this is C squared, so we want to go get C by taking the square root of both sides of our equation. C then will equal 67 decimal 7. And again, we aren't given any unit of measure here, so that will just be 
units, and that was C that we found there. So this is how we work in finding a hypotenuse. Half of the time, or more, we're not going to be given the two sides. We might actually be given the hypotenuse itself. How does this change our ability to solve? It means that there's a few extra steps, there's a little bit more algebra involved, but otherwise it's a very similar procedure. So let's jump down to part C and look at example A. So in this right angle triangle, we've actually been given the hypotenuse as 104.81. We're missing one of the two sides. We've got a 91, but the other side for us is a G. In terms of trying to determine what the value of G will be in this right angle triangle, we do the exact same setup. We're going to write out our Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. This time, however, I've been given the C value. And I'm going to substitute that in right now. 104.81 squared equals, and as I said at the beginning, the A and B are interchangeable in terms of which one's which. They both re they represent the other legs on our um, triangle, right angle triangle. So I'm just going to substitute 91 in for A, but it really doesn't matter. 91 squared plus, now the one we don't know is G. So I'm going to replace that B with a G, because that's the variable we're using here. And we're going to grab a G squared. From here, let's start working through the math. So I'm going to type in 104.81 and I'm going to square it and that's going to give me 10,985.1361. Now I don't want to do any rounding yet so I'm going to write that whole mess out right there. And 91 squared is going to give me 8,281. And the G squared, we don't know what's up with that yet. Now we need to do a little bit of algebra. We want to try to isolate our g. And two things are happening to g at the moment. It is being squared and it has 8,281 being added to it. So we are going to undo both of those things. And I'm going to start by subtracting 8,281 from each side of this equation. And that is going to give me, come here calculator, 5.1361 and I am going to subtract 8,281 and that is going to give me the, that is not the right answer. I have done something wrong. Let me try that one more time in my calculator. Nine, eight, and I'm going to subtract 8,281. That looks a lot better. That's going to give me 2,704.1361, and that's going to equal my g squared. That's much better. From here, I want to get g again, so it's being squared. I'm going to undo that by taking the square root of each side of my equation. And now I'm going to square root that, 2,704.1361. Take the square root of that, and it gives me 52.0 equals g. And that is how we find one of the other legs of our triangle that's not the hypotenuse. So what I'd like you to do now is hit pause in the video, and I'd like you to try on your own to find the side K in this right angle triangle in, exa uh, in example B. So hit pause, come on back when you're done, and we'll see how you did. Okay, let's start with our Pythagorean theorem. So we have our C squared equals our A squared plus B squared. And we are going to start by substituting in our hypotenuse. So that's 86.13 squared equals, and let's leave a squared this time. Let's substitute our other known value in for b, just to keep it, keep mixing it up. And that's going to be 83, and that's going to be squared. And I realize that that shouldn't be a, that should be in this particular question, that should be a k. As before, let's start to put some numbers in here. So we've got 86. 0.13, and we're going to square that to get our 7,418.3769 equals k squared plus, and we're going to do 83 squared, gives us 6,889. As before, we're going to do some algebra so that we can isolate our k squared. We are going to subtract 6,889 from both sides of our equation. 89. 7,418.3769 and that's going to give me 
529 decimal 3769 oops equal to k squared how do we get k we take the square root of both sides of our equation and that is going to give us 23 when we do the math so 23 equals k so this is how you use the Pythagorean theorem to go about finding side lengths in a right angle triangle, either the hypotenuse, as we saw in part B, or one of the other two legs, as you saw in part C. So now is the time that you head off, do the self-assessment, check with your teacher, following that you'll do a ticket out the door, and then you are on to objective number two.